Please don't let Richard Hammond destroy this. I hope it's not this. driven by Richard Hammond. Oh, Hammond's hand. Another rib from Justin Hammond. You know what? Let's do it. This day was always coming. I knew it would. I mean, it's inevitable. I'm kind of, I'm kind of their test driver. Well, crash test dummy. Um, so here it is, the new one. Over 1,800 horsepower, right there. I have been a bit anxious about this, I'm not gonna lie, but it's okay I've taken precautions because I brought with me this. It's my lucky watch. It's the one I was wearing in the last Rimac I drove. Made in Switzerland, carefully perfected on the 10th of June, 2017 by the British, me. So with that with me, confident-ish. Right. Oh, last time I fiddled with one of these, I was upside down at the bottom of a Swiss mountain. This is easier. Um, it turns out Rimac were also a bit nervous and apprehensive about me driving this. So they too have insisted on me bringing something along for luck, uh, him. Matteo, he's their chief engineer and test driver. Um, been all that way. Thank you. Thank you. It's just a precaution and it's sensible. I think it's wise. Right, um, oof. got to adjust things. So, um, oh, that's better. A bit closer, a bit less close, a bit higher. Oh, yeah. Maybe a bit more of that. Thank you. I'm not putting it off. I'm just adjusting. You do get a lot for your two million quid. I mean, that is clever. Right, um, I'm pulling away. Shall I pull away? Let's go. I'll pull away. Yep, I'm pulling away. Here I go. Here I go. Pulling away. Okay, I'm pulling away. Foot off the brake and on the accelerator. Oh, right. Yeah, that works. This new Rimac is the Nevada named after the sudden and very violent summer storms that occasionally lash the coast of Croatia, so it's an appropriate name. But before this, and in the start, it was the Concept One, an electric hypercar designed, developed, and made entirely in a small Croatian factory no one had ever heard of. And then suddenly everyone had heard of it because I was at the bottom of a Swiss Alp upside down in one. I've never tried to dodge the blame for the crash. I've always fessed up, it was me. And my excuse is, it was so crazily, addictively fast and so drivable and exploitable that while well, I crossed the finish line of a Swiss hill climb and kept my foot in, and no amount of computer wizardry and technical genius can defy physics, or more specifically, gravity, when some lead-footed muppet throws it off a Swiss mountain. Despite being electric, it feels sort of weirdly familiar, if massively powerful. And that's because Rimac's aim was not to make a, a planet-saving car. The aim of this was to make the best hypercar they could. And Matter and his team believed the answer to that was to go electric. So this is designed just to be really good. Saving the trees and polar bears comes secondary to that. It's a good benefit, but it's not why they did it. Sometimes if you're lucky enough to get to drive a hypercar, which you might have been, and crash them, um, there's a sense of it only working on a track, not in the real world. But I mean, I'm now driving around the aptly for me named Alpine circuit, and it's a car. Yes, it's got over 1,800 horsepower, over 2,300 newton meters of torque, it can hit 60 from a standstill in just over 1.8 seconds. 1.8. Here we go. Oh my God! Holy, that is unreal. Genuinely grateful for Matto for giving me the chance to have a go, because I am exorcising a demon. When I first heard it fire up with its first whirs and chirrups, it was a bit like, Sometimes when I hear a jet engine start, it takes me back to a certain jet-powered dragster I once, well, I crashed. But this thing, as soon as I set off, 
Lawrence puts its big electric arms round you and says, now you'll be all right, mate, just don't get carried away this time. I owe my life to the work they put into the carbon fiber monocoque on the original Concept One, because I flipped it three times as it fell hundreds of feet off a Swiss mountain and landed on its roof, and the door opened. It was still the right shape and I could get out. I really thought I might have managed to destroy not just that car, but also the company, which is why I've been overjoyed since to watch them just flourish. And it's a fabulous story. The car world loves a story. We really do. We like a legend. Matej Rimmer, in 2008, was pretty much a kid. He'd not long ago won a school science competition. And the money he won, he spent on replacing the knackered engine in a little BMW 3 Series he was racing. And he replaced it with an electric motor. He took it from a forklift truck and did quite well racing it. By 2011, he started making his own electric cars from scratch. Obviously then, I came along in 2017 and rather spectacularly destroyed the eighth one that they've built. But that was not the end of them. By 2022, he'd split the company. So there's Rimac Technical and Rimac Automobili. The automobile division has now merged with another automotive name with a bit of a legend behind it, Bugatti. I couldn't be more happy because I thought I'd ruined him. But actually, only because of him and his company and his people's genius, they've merged with Bugatti. <laughs> so even a lead-footed brummy idiot didn't manage to derail their heroic Croatian ambition. My excuse for crashing this car, that whilst it was incredibly powerful, it was also very steerable and usable, means I really should exploit it a bit. And it's kind of a waste to be here in it and not give it some proper exercise. So, uh, it goes. Yeah, he's, he's the, their other test driver with me. He doesn't do the more crashy stuff, he leaves that to me. So the car now is going on from here to Salon Privé, intact. And if you want to see more of my adventures with it, click the link below to watch my show on Discovery Plus. I'm so relieved! <laughs>